Okay, how are we? I hope we're all doing very well. Let's get into another Tutorial Tuesday <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each week is on every Tuesday. We bring you a brand new, fresh, mmm. Mm, mm, mm. A fresh photography tutorial. Let's dive into Lightroom Classic, which is where we're going to be doing this week's tutorial. And let's talk about a mask that I don't think we've ever talked about, but can be incredibly powerful and very, very useful. Now, we're going to be talking about luminosity masks and color masks, which is where essentially you can select areas of the photo to edit using a mask, but based on their luminosity values or based on color. I'll show you exactly what I mean, but it can be incredibly powerful to actually affect the way you edit your photos and the kind of results that you can get. Let's take a look. So for example, we've got this photo here. I've already edited this photo and actually, if I'm honest, I'm very happy with it. You know, it's a very beautiful day and it looks great, I think. But let's say we want to warm up part of this sky. Well, we could just go in, we could go ahead, go ahead and select a mask, click sky. Lightroom's going to mask out the sky for us. All good. I don't have to think about it. I can warm that up. Lovely. Maybe I adjust the exposure a little bit. Lovely. All good. But in this situation, we've not affected the reflection at all. Now we could go ahead and add maybe a brush in. So, okay, now we brush in onto the reflection, but it's it's a little bit messy. It's not ideal. And it can take a little bit, a little bit more time and a finesse, which we don't actually have to do. So let's get rid of that mask. Let's go ahead and delete it. What we can do instead is come down here to range. And we're going to click luminance range. You've got a few different options here. Let's look at luminance right now. Now this allows us to select an area of the photo. As you can see, when I mouse over now, I've got an eyedropper tool. I select an area to actually select that luminosity value so that Lightroom can then take that value and mask out everything that matches that within the photo. Now I could just click. So for example, I could click here and you can see Lightroom has masked out that area within the photo, but I can also actually click and drag, making a little box, which Lightroom then take the average luminosity value inside that box to create a mask. And over on the right, you can see there's a little scale here, which we can use to actually adjust and actually completely change if you want to, what is selected within the mask. So the scale works with shadows on the left and highlights over on the right. And you can see there's a few different handles for us to pull out here. There's kind of this main box, which we can actually move around and we can extend that, make that larger. And then we've got these two little arrows here we can move as well, which allow us to feather the selection. So at the moment, we've got the highlights really selected. I want to bring the main selection of the mask across a little bit. So we're, we're bringing in more of the photo. And then I want to make sure it's nice and feathered as well. This way, we've selected a massive part of the sky, but not the darker areas. And we've got that reflection as well, but not the darker areas again of where the sea is. And now, if I was to go ahead and add some warmth, that looks really good. We're, we're almost getting this glow kind of coming out from here across the sky and the reflection. Maybe I want to play around with the exposure a little bit as well. Bring that down, maybe the highlights down a little bit, not too much, but you see how much of a difference that makes for both the reflection and the sky. Now I can hide this mask, so that's what it was like before. This is what it's like when we add that in. It's an incredibly powerful way of selecting kind of the correct areas and actually adjusting it yourself as well. Now let's take this photo here where we've got my dog Nala running across a really low tide, so it almost looks like she's running a water, which is pretty fun. We want to do a couple of different things, right? There's loads of stuff we could do with these masks to this photo, but let's start by actually going to create a new mask, luminance range. I'm going to select an area on her, on Nala, my dog. And okay, that's great. So it's selected essentially her plus a lot of the sea and a little bit of the cloud up here. I actually don't want to get all of that. So let's just move these bars around a little bit until we're not getting the highlights of the C. There we go. That's that's a little bit better. And what I can do now is bring the exposure up just a touch, maybe the shadows a little bit. Nice. Okay. So what that's actually allowed me, I just want to move this around so we keep detail in the C here. But what that's allowed me to do is brighten Nala, my subject, without making it so strange looking, right? Sometimes if you go select subject and just bring the exposure up, it can look like you've almost just actually added them into the scene, popped them in, 
which isn't ideal. Whereas what we've done with this mask is make it a little bit more natural because we're bringing up other elements of the photo as well. So if I turn that mask off and back on, you can see I've just brightened those areas, including in the C as well, which makes it feel a little bit more real, a little bit more natural, and it blends better into the photo. But let's say we wanted to darken this cloud specifically up here. Well, one way of doing that would be to go create new mask, linear gradient, and just drag this on like so, and then darken that. That works pretty well, but we are then capturing a lot of the rest of the sky, right? We're affecting the lighter part of the sky, some of this. Let's say we just want to target that cloud. Okay, let's get rid of that mask. Let's go create new mask, luminance range, and we're going to select that kind of luminosity value using the square, right? Now it has selected other parts of the sky, some of the darker parts of the sky, which we don't want to affect. We could do, we could bring that exposure down a little bit, maybe even come down, add some dehaze to the darker parts. That does certainly add some nice drama, but we don't necessarily want to do that. Okay, so let's reset that. Let's reset the exposure. What we can do instead is right click and we're gonna go intersect mask with linear gradient. This is one of my favorite features of the masks of Lightroom, is how you can use multiple masks together to create your final mask. So with this one, we're now bringing this on. Let's press O to actually show the mask. And as you, as you see, if I drag this linear gradient across, it is only applying where the luminance mask is already applied to the photo. So you can see it's only applying to that cloud. So what that means is we can now feather the mask across the cloud without affecting the lighter part of the clouds beneath it. So we can now bring that exposure down a little bit, maybe come down here, bit of dehaze, and it just adds a bit of drama up in that top kind of right section of the photo, but in a very controlled way. I love this way of using masks, actually combining them like so. Now I don't use those masks nearly as often as I use a lot of the other masking tools within Lightroom Classic, but there are occasions where they are just are the best tool for the job and they are very powerful for being able to selectively mask out elements of your photo that the other tools don't necessarily do as good of a job with. So while it may not be the go-to tool, it absolutely is a useful one to have in your box of tricks that you can pull out for the right edit. Ooh, it can make all the difference. Now, of course, you can check out a full list of all the kit we use for these videos, for the photos, everything down in the description as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. There's new content all the time. Let me know if there's something you'd like to see in a future tutorial Tuesday. Editing, practical, out and about. Let me know. I'd love to know what you guys want to see. Otherwise, all that's left for me to say is, as always, thanks for watching.